step-by-step -step instructions. Use core website to apply for unarmed security officer guard card license. State of Tennessee. It is highly recommended that all applicants for security guard officer registration apply through the comprehensive online regulatory enforcement system core website at https colon slash slash core dot tn dot gov first time users will create an online account in core the general recommendation is to use your personal email address as your username it is usually unlikely to change and becomes one less thing for you to remember password the password rules are eight characters minimum at least one character must be an uppercase letter at least one character must be a lowercase letter at least one character must be a number one through nine or zero at least one character must be a special symbol or the shift of one of those numbers you should employ a safe and reliable practice to keep up with usernames and passwords because you will be using this again in the future for renewals and other maintenance in everything you do an orderly fashion is usually the best option before actually applying for unarmed guard registration make sure you have the following items completed electronic fingerprinting Contact Identigo for a fingerprinting appointment at 1-855-226-2937 or https colon slash slash www.identigo.com. Use the following unarmed service code. 28TZ8X. Have a good passport style photo made. This can be done with your smartphone, just make sure it conforms to passport standards. Frontal. Above shoulders. No headwear no dark sunglasses clear prescription lenses acceptable training while it is allowed to complete training within 15 days the best scenario is to have training completed and submit the training form with the application when an agent receives your file to process and everything is there it goes smooth and fast if only one or two items are attached and the others are missing or stored elsewhere the long list of issues and delays begins Core Home Screen Tour User ID All caps First time users Start here to register a new account Helpful items Once you have properly registered for the site, you will be brought to the Quick Start menu In the Choose Board section Choose Private Protective Services In the Choose Activity section Choose Initial Unarmed Guard Registration Application when making your choices, beware of private probation and private investigation. Those are not private protective services. Also beware during the next choice and do not choose. Unarmed security guard, armed forces reg for license exemption. There is a really good chance you do not meet those requirements. The additional activities at the bottom include. Add existing license, permit, registration or certificate of authority to your account. This system is used for all the regulatory boards, divisions, and programs, and you may have a CPA license, a scrap metal dealer license, a barber license, etc. You can add all those to your account, so that you can log in and choose, which profession you need to maintain at that moment. Once you have entered the information properly, click the select button indicated to proceed. This is displayed on the fourth screen. Major problems are detailed in this section, outlined in red. As noted, there are major problems that start right on this page. Applicants attest U.S. citizenship, by way of Tennessee driver's license, or out-of-state driver's license, U.S. passport, birth certificate, and never attach a copy for verification. Private protective services should never have to deny an application, due to a material misstatement, yet they do every day. Private protective services should never have to send letters, emails, and telephone calls, asking for written explanations and court documents for criminal history items, yet they do every day. Once you start your job, you will need to document and verify these items on your job application. On your job, you will have to document and verify all the rules and regulations you are supposed to follow and enforce on post. If not, you may not be able to keep your job.
Incomplete application error. If the applicant has already been in the system, and started an application, and something happened, for example, you received a phone call and the session timed out, you may see this message screen. If you are having problems with a previous session, and you see this screen, it is recommended to start a new application. Electronic fingerprinting. If you answer, no, here, it will end your application process. If you answer, yes, so you can continue, but you really have not done this, it is fraud, because at the end you attest that all is correct. Electronic fingerprinting error. If you answer, no, to the fingerprint question, this error message is displayed. Remember, if you go back and answer yes, just to move on, and you do not have your prints, it is fraud. TCA Section 62-35-117, 1, states. You must be at least 18 years of age if applying for an unarmed registration. Entry Format Errors. If you have issues, the computer will point them out, such as you see here. For example, if you put in the dashes, in the social security number, it will flag it. Simply go back and retype the entry. Main address. One common confusion is the street number of the address. It is just that, the number where you live on that street. The rest of the address is entered in the lines below. Also note, that the telephone number and email are not mandatory. If left blank, private protective services will need to communicate with you by standard mail. So if nothing is entered, you are relying on the USPS to make you aware of any issues via mail, which will slow down the process. Place of birth. Anything other than one of the 50 US states, or a handful of US territories, including Puerto Rico, is going to require additional documentation. People born on foreign military bases, will have a certificate of birth abroad, etc. Attach it. Otherwise, private protective services will not be able to process your application. Eligibility Verification for Entitlements Act, EVA. Here you must attest, whether or not, you are a US citizen, or qualified alien. Since you entered your social security number in the beginning, and the law requires it for your electronic fingerprint information, it is easiest, to just use the electronic fingerprint receipt for verification. Almost nobody, attaches any of the other items listed. Application questions. Occasionally, a person may accidentally answer these questions incorrectly. Yes, to either of the first two questions, will require explanations and, or, court documents. Training. If training has been completed, include the training form. Fingerprint policy and acknowledgement. A few years ago, the TBI did not allow private protective services to give the applicant a copy of the criminal history report. Now they do, as long as the person acknowledges their fingerprint policy. That is the purpose of this section. Typically, all three questions are answered, yes. Low Income Waiver In 2019, the legislature passed a law that allows applicants to apply for a fee waiver for certain initial state application fees, provided the applicant is currently receiving state or federal public assistance, such as SNAP, formerly known as food stamps, for example. If you answer, yes, you must provide supporting documentation. Low Income Waiver Right above this, it says, Please note, that this waiver does not apply to federal fees, if applicable. If you qualify for this waiver, you are still required to pay the federal fees. Applicants are often confused about this, thinking they must answer yes, simply because they are receiving the benefits. No. Is acceptable, unless you want to apply for a fee waiver. Read the question carefully. It is not asking, if you are receiving the benefit. It is asking, would you like to apply for a fee waiver? File attachments. This is another, potential trouble spot. There are seven choices, on the menu. Most common are, fingerprinting receipt, head and shoulders photo, and training. Also common, are court documents, and citizenship documents. File attachments. The trouble spot, seems to be the fact, 
that once you select your file that you want to attach, you must click the attach button. Once you do that, a list begins to populate above to indicate what you have attached. File attachments. Note the list of attachments here. It says files attached. Three of seven. Many applicants say they were attaching, but the file ends up being blank. Just make sure you see your attachments populated in this area. Summary. Pre-fees. This is just a partial view of this section. The applicant is able to edit anything they have submitted to the application thus far. The very last part of the page is a list of the attachments, so you can double check that the documents were attached. Summary. Pre-fees. Note the three attached files. The very last part of the page is a list of the attachments. This is where you can double check that the documents were attached. At the end of this page, there is another line that is important to note. Attestation. Finally, click yes, and then submit, and then you will pay the fees, and that is it. Application submission. Once you click on submit, you will see this screen for a few moments while it processes. Full payment is $70 and must be paid in full to satisfy rule 0, 7, 8, 0, dash, 0, 5, dash, 0, 2, dash, 0, 8, 1, A, through F. You may now click, pay now, and pay the $70 fee, with a credit or debit card. You must click this, radio button, to indicate you know, agree, with the $70 fee. You may now indicate which type of card you are using. Then click, next. This view will show, what type payment card option you chose to pay $70. Then click Next. This is the final view after application is complete. Then click Next to return to the Quick Start menu back to the beginning. It is a good practice to take a screenshot or print the screen for your records. Step by step instructions complete.